Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's November 7th, 2018, and you are watching the Theo Trade evening video. Well, there's 20 minutes left in the trading day, but I figured, hey, what better time to record this video than when we're sitting on one of our specific gravity points? People, we've talked about them at nauseum in some of the recent videos, some of the sessions we've done here at Theo Trade. We're on it. 2811. On the money, we stopped on the dime at that particular level. Fairly amazing in a $2,800 product. Why does this matter? Well, I asked the question uh, in the title of this video, will the rally hold? And one of the things that we kind of denoted is in that the midst of volatility, and that's exactly what we've seen lately, some volatility to the upside today, following, of course, the midterm elections. Well, in the midst of this volatility, we mentioned extensively how the marketplace was just going to ping back and forth between levels. Well, check this out on a little bit of a longer time frame. Again, this 2811 has been defined for, for the most part, the entire year here in 2018. Okay. Once again, we're back, right back to the 2811. Now, I'm going to dig a lot deeper than just a couple of levels, maybe kind of, you know, illuminated on your screen here. But again, we're back to 2811. If you take a look at the S&P futures themselves, a 51 point move on about 1.6 million contracts. Now, one of the first things that does kind of stand out, the volume in the S&P futures is light relative to this move. In fact, most of the volume that we saw, okay, over a half a million contracts were traded even before the cash market opened. So net net, the day is rather light, even though we're seeing a 51 point move <clears throat> to the upside. s and is up about, again, 1.8% with about, as I said, 20 minutes to go to the cash close. But let us dig a little bit deeper than just a specific level. And again, it is shocking to see, if you will, the efficiency of trade in the midst of what feels like chaos to the upside. It's good to know that you have very detailed levels to go off of. Again, that 2811, so we're all clear about these levels. There's 2842 above that, okay? Below it, we'd be reversing back to 2731. Now, Many of you may be market technicians. If you're into technical analysis, you're not going to get much detail from me. I'm much more of a quantitative trader. Nevertheless, one thing that really resonates is specific here inside of what we term the monsters of tech. Now, the monsters of tech is this kind of conglomerate symbol that we built. It's Facebook and it's Apple and it's Microsoft, it's Google, and it's Amazon, all added and compiled together. But one thing it just really kind of resonates with me is even after today's kind of wicked bounce back to the upside, we are still, okay, in just hideous, hideous territory at this point in time, okay, in technology. I mean, this isn't even a 50% bounce back from some of the damage that was effectively done in recent trade. And if you're trying to quantify, you know, is this rally going to hold? Well, well, looking at technology and technology alone, it still doesn't bode well per se for the marketplace. Again, damage done. Again, I'm not too much into the technical side of that. Nevertheless, I think it also is appropriate at this point in time to bring up the financials. Now, the financials, the damage actually started in the $29 region, got all the way down to $25, and we've actually bounced back over 50% of that. One of the key kind of lines in the sand for financials happens to be none other than around 2650. We are clearly above that. That, okay, is one of the areas that I would construe as the most positive sign, okay, in this marketplace. So we're in this little bit of a catch 22 right now. We're looking at the S&P futures. We're calling out levels to the point, people, okay? We look down at technology, technology, all right, this is still a rip your face off rally. Then we cruise over to the financials and the financials, well, they've actually got some legs under them. <clears throat> but then recognize the financials, let's actually cruise over to the financial sector itself. And we're going to go ahead, we're gonna open up, we're gonna look at the implied volatility. There's still almost 23%, just shy of 23% implied volatility on a 43 cent move for the remainder of this week. And I bring that up because very few people recognize there's an FOMC 
Okay, meeting. What? Okay, people are like I was I was only worried. I was only worried about what? You're worried about December. Okay, but there is an FOMC meeting that comes out tomorrow. Why on a Thursday, not a Wednesday? Well, because they actually push the meeting for one day for the election day. FOMC meeting there could be a change of policy. Okay, to some degree, or they're going to highlight a bit more about what's coming in terms of December. I, in no way, shape, or form, think that there's going to be any change of rates. But again, it's the rhetoric that's going to come out that could actually change the tone of the entire financial sector in a very, very short period of time. So it's critical to mention FOMC. <clears throat> At that point, you almost have to discount a little bit of some of the action inside of the financials in today's trade. Which brings me to my next point of the marketplace in discussion of volatility in the market. So we know that the marketplace is pinging back and forth between levels 2811, right? 2731. <clears throat> but one other key area that you often see in the midst of some volatility, it's this, it's correlation. And I've talked about this pretty much at nauseum as well. This is a fully correlated market. There's no place to hide to the upside that is, okay? What we have then is the S&P futures, they're driving the bus. What that effectively means, doesn't matter, okay? What you are, who you are. If you're going to be in the S&P 100, you're gonna get driven to the upside today. I mean, there was even fairly horrific news, okay, on Boeing today, until Boeing ultimately followed suit for the rest of the marketplace. In fact, if you take a look at this trade earlier in the day, <clears throat> Boeing was actually off early hours, correlation grips hold, pulled the stock back to the upside. That's one thing I will continually mention, okay? Markets, it's no longer so much what you think. It's no longer so much the fundamentals, okay? Markets have become much more of a quantitative trader's play, and that is effectively, hey, okay? In this case, it means correlation. Correlation does not necessarily construe a bullish outlook. In a rip your face off kind of rally, this is what it should look like. We should be correlated and correlated effectively to the upside. And that is precisely what we are seeing today. All right. Next thing I got to show you here, SPX, right? For those of you in tune with the SPX, the SPX is now trading 28.09. Now for the remainder of the week, what do we have? About a $32 expected move. Now the entire trading week, the entire trading week only held about a $65 expected move. And why is this important right now? Well, I'd like to give you a little bit of an orientation, orientation of where we currently are. So here is the expected move for the week. <clears throat> We've actually cracked outside of it right now, okay? This is a big crack to the upside. So the expected move has been breached. Now, what do you got? One of two things. If the market continues to the outside, we're just wildly, wildly inefficient. Right, and inefficient to the upside. If the market pulls back inside, okay, what do we effectively get? Well, that would obviously be a little bit of a bearish move for the remainder of this week. And right here is where people are looking for answers. Like, are we gonna pull back a little bit on this week? Well, I have a couple of things that I wanna show you. Again, bonds hanging out relatively flat. The next move to the S&Ps is gonna belong to the bonds. And again, we have an FOMC meeting come tomorrow, all right? Got to be careful. Bonds are going to influence those financials and they're going to rock these S&Ps in very, very short order. Therein lies, again, a lot of risk to the remainder of the week. Now, if you do look at the SPX and you adhere to the expected move, the expected move is right at 2788. Again, 2788. Okay. And there is a very, okay, a very decent probability of us pulling back inside of that expected move. Now, last on this front of, will this rally hold? Well, I'm kind of saving some of the best for last. A lot of people are looking at the VIX. They're like, the VIX is down some 16%. It's all over. Come on out of the woodwork. Well, I counter with this. If you are looking at the VIX and the VIX is backed off a little bit, VIX is still, okay, in the mid 16 range. First of all, Use the lower VIX. Use the lower VIX to your advantage. What should you be doing with it? Get your hedges on. If you're not hedged and you get an opportunity to hedge, that means if you're using something like an atomic spread, get it on, people. Go into the spiders. Price the atomic hedge. <clears throat> very often, when a market is going to display volatility, you're given very little time to get those hedges back in place. It's an opportunity, nothing more. Look at this, is you're being sucked underwater in the S&Ps, okay? 
They're just giving you a gasp of air right now. If you need to get your hedge on or you need to get out of a position, hey, exit stage left. It's your opportunity right here, right now. The VIX came off, but again, not that much. What I said I was saving kind of the best for last. Well, this one begs the question, <clears throat> what are the volatility futures seeing? So the volatility futures have been inverted. They've been inverted for quite some time right now. And what inverted effectively means is like 14-day volatility futures versus, for example, 42-day. The 14-day has been above the 42-day. This is the first time in quite some time, again, that they have normalized, but barely. Okay. One of the things that really kind of resonates with me is the volatility skew has kind of looked like this. What that effectively means is there's been more risk in the 14-day window than there has, for example, in the 42-day window. And what does that mean? It means, you know, risk is now, risk is imminent. Okay. I would have expected after this kind of a wicked rally, the volatility futures would have looked like that. The risk drops out and everybody's like, okay. It's okay to come out of the cave. We're all going to be fine, but it didn't. We didn't completely normalize, right? Here, we're sitting just like this, okay? We flattened out quite a bit, but the differential between the 14-day and the 42-day is still very much what I would construe as alarming. There's only 20 cents difference, which basically means, okay, we're hanging on by a thread to this rally right now, and for all intents and purpose, okay, we're still sitting in kind of one of these, again, quintessential rip your face off rallies. Now, one thing I have mentioned extensively, <clears throat> this marketplace is going to be great at getting people to bite again and again, get them to bite on the fact that it's okay, that you can get long, that you can find stocks. Okay. The underlying theme that you're missing, they're still going to pull that $4 trillion balance sheet. And they're still going to raise rates. Okay. Again, it's this like house of horrors. That's just going to keep coming back to haunt you right? Interest rates, they ain't going down, okay? Quantitative easing, it's getting absorbed out, right? They're going to mop up $4 trillion, and you're going to continually hear that. For the time being, you got to be on your guard. You got to expect that volatility is still very much with us. To answer that question, will the rally hold? Yeah, sure. For the next couple of days, maybe, unless the SPX starts to break, pull back inside of the expected move, okay? In the near term, absolutely can see a rally longer duration we fully anticipate still some sell side activity as such <clears throat> we used microsoft today microsoft okay big break back to the upside used it as an opportunity okay to step in and put on a duration short position again a duration short position using an in the money put i purchased an 85 delta it's a 125 put why on a percentage basis just take a look at microsoft <clears throat> unscathed up 30 percent year to date how does it actually compare to some of the other monsters of tech apple still up 20 percent year to date facebook well <laughs> need we bring up facebook next amazon okay amazon again performing well today 47 percent but still well off okay that kind of year where it was having a 70 percent return Nevertheless, Microsoft completely unscathed in some of this recent sell side activity. And we expect, okay, that eventually the algorithms will turn towards Microsoft. With that, I want to thank everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Once again, 2811, right on one of our gravity points. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.